my life intent was I want to show up in this life. And not only do I want to show up in this life, but I'd like to show up in a way that could be useful to other people. In other words, lead, I know that there's this present moment sta space, this paradigm, which is right here. It's not like we have to go anywhere to get to heaven. We just have to show up here. We already died. We just got to show up now, rest in right, peace, right? Right. 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 right? Rest time to RIP, rest in peace, right? right. And so this, this state of being is here, but why is it that I'm unable to enter it? What is it? that drags me out of it into this mental place which there's this massive amount of, of physical discomfort. And through asking these questions and then entering experiences, I became aware of um, what I call the pathway of awareness. And the pathway of awareness is, is a pathway that our awareness moves along to enter what we call the human experience. And we can see this pathway very simply by watching a baby. When a baby is born, it first emotes. It's purely an emotional being. It then starts to use its emotions as a capacity to communicate, to try and manipulate its, ex its experience. It starts to enter more of a mental capacity. And then only can a baby reach out, deliberately grab something and hold on to it deliberately. So it doesn't come out doing physical things. It doesn't come out chatting, wow, it's weird in the womb. And, well, it comes out emotional. And I noticed this, this pathway also in what I call the seven-year cycle. Um, the first seven years of our life, we're children, and as children, we're energy in motion. Any parent will tell you that their children are basically energy in motion, and it's an emotional period. After seven years, we go, in, we become institutionalized, in, in which we go into a very uh, mentally focal, focused aspect of our experience, and and then for another seven years, we're reading, writing, communicating, very powerful mental development, and then around the age of fourteen is actually a physical shift in our being, which we call puberty, and then we become more focused on the physical world. So this pathway is going from the emotional through the mental and into the physical. The only thing is by the time we get into the physical, we have become physically transfixed by this world. We perceive this world as happening to us instead of through us. And what happens is we perceive the world happening to us, and then we mentally interpret it. We try to understand it, and then we act out of these mental interpretations. And what we don't realize, uh, and the word real eyes is related to, to the way that the heart sees. The heart has real eyes. The mental body has anal eyes. That's why we say I analyze this. And then the, f the physical body has physical eyes. By the time we're adults, we are using our physical eyes and our anal eyes. And we're not r using our insight. We're seeing everything outside. And that's because between the ages of 7 and 14, this part of our being, that story I told initially about the man searching for something because his lights aren't working at home, so he searches out in the street, there's a part of our being that, that shuts down between the ages of 7 and 14, which is our felt perception. Intuition. And, I, I, yes. Uh, well, uh, intuition, uh, our insight, our ability to see within to the causal point of our experience. And, and so when this part of our being shuts down, we can't see the connection between the causal part of our experience, the first seven years of, of our childhood, and the impact that this is on, having ongoing to the quality of our adult experience. In our adult experience, we have these uh, experiences of discomfort or whatever imbalance coming up, and we see it as things happening in the physical world, which we then try and mentally interpret, and we even try and change the mental way we think about it. But actually, what, what I discovered was that in the first seven years of my life, the experiences impacted my emotional body and created or, or set a way that my emotional body runs. And it runs in that pattern ongoing. And that pattern was then implanted into my mental body between 7 and 14, and then between 14 and 21 into my physical experience. And then it, it repeats ongoing over and over to the point that many of us say, I don't know why this keeps happening to me. I don't know why this keeps happening to me. And what I discovered... In the same seven-year cycles? Is that what well, well, from 21 years old, the seven-year cycle, that is, it's first embedded. It's like someone says, you know, I'm having my bad karma, it's good karma. Where is this karma that we talk about actually implanted? Well, it is, it's implanted like a software program. Whatever happens to us in the first seven years of our life determines how our emotional body functions. And that first seven years is then repeated in the next seven years of our life through mental activity where we are taught uh, uh, um, storytelling almost. We turn 
these energetic experiences into stories, or what I prefer to call them spells, because we learn to spell words. And so um, we turn them into, we say, I have fear, anger, grief. When a child is up to the first seven years of its life, it's not having fear, anger, and grief. It doesn't even it use doesn't it. It doesn't define it. It doesn't define it. It becomes defined in those next seven years. Mm -hmm. And then from seven to, to, to 21 onwards, it becomes more physical circumstances happening to me that I see the fear, anger, and grief in the world around me. And from that point on, it's 21. That's why we have a big party at 21, because we've arrived. We've integrated something into our emotional, then mental, then physical body. And then that experience will continue every seven years over and over in our experience. And traditionally, the first time we'd really become aware of it would be what we call a midlife crisis. And a midlife crisis is when that emotional condition would break through into our awareness. And that's why a person having a midlife crisis often acts like a child. Because what's happening is they're acting out something that was implanted during childhood. But what's happening in our world at the moment is that we've entered emotional body awareness as a planet. Um, and so we're actually in midlife crisis right now. We're actually in a crisis where the condition, the emotional condition of us as humanity is coming up into our awareness. And there's two ways that we are, are relating to this. The, the, the human beings that know that the heart is the causal point of the quality of the experience are, whether they, whether they have the vocabulary to say that to themselves or not, what they're doing is they're taking responsibility for their life experience and go, I'm responsible for the quality of my experience. I'm responsible for how I feel about things. Right, I'm taking responsibility, and so what they're doing is they are transforming what's coming up to be cleansed. The human beings that are not yet at that emotional or that heart level of awareness are still per perceiving the world happening to them, and therefore going out and attacking the world, and, and attacking the projections of their own stuff in the world. So, for example, uh, what's going on in Iraq is a memory. What's going on in the Middle East at the moment it's a memory. What's even going on in Pakistan at the moment? These are memories. These are ancient memories coming up, but if we don't see them coming through us, we see them as happening to us. These are opportunities for us to process this, the, the fear, anger, and grief. That's what these memories are, to process them, or otherwise to project them out in the world. And, and if we project them out in the world, either we go into the heart or we run into the traffic. So at this point in our experience, it's, it's really about um, uh, uh, doing the hard work, going. Um, there was someone who once said, unless you become a child again, you don't enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, unless I go and take a look. A fairly well-known figure. Well-known uh, figure. Right? Someone once yeah. said that. And, 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 that, and that person also said, blessed are those who mourn. Right? In other words, if you don't take care of your grief, you're not going to, you know, that's the blessing. So really the, the task for anyone who begins to um, uh, take responsibility for the experience is to say, what's going on with me in my own heart? And when we ask that question, it's going to lead us back to our childhood. And by going back to that child part of ourselves, and taking care of that, we then become our own parent. And as we become our own parent, we stop projecting our need and wanting this into the world. And that's how we grow up. But it's, it's also, it's actually also more profound than that, in, um, in that our fear, anger, and grief, which is implanted within our experience in the first seven years of our life. What I discovered in my own experience is that the rage that I, that I was experiencing that, that went into a thought pattern about myself and the world I'm in, and then manifested as extreme physical pain, that rage had nothing to do with now. Nothing to do with now. Nothing to do with now. It was, it was a rage that happened to a six-year-old whose, whose, whose father committed suicide, whose mother then went into a state of having a broken heart. It was rage and grief to do with that period. And in fact, it had nothing to do with then either, because it had to do with the father and mother's childhood that had been brought, and their parents' childhood. And it's been going on for generations and generations and generations. And, and what each generation does is it, it imprints into the emotional body of the next generation this ongoing pattern, which is a dysfunctional definition of what love is. And so if one begins to take responsibility for one's experience, it's about going in and looking at one's own dysfunctional definition of what love is and freeing 
those freeing oneself up from that. And the only way to free oneself up from that is to stop saying, the, it stops here with me. I know that my mother and father went through stuff in their childhood and they did the best they passed on to me, but it actually stops with me. I take responsibility for the condition of my emotional body and I clear that in myself.